is Queen Amadala herself. You will not be so pleased when you hear what I have to say, Viceroy. Your trade boycott of our planet has ended. Padme Amidala was the senator of Naboo, wife of Anakin Skywalker, and mother of the rebel heroes Luke Skywalker and Leia Organa. But before all of this happened, she was the elected queen of Naboo at just, um, 14? How did this happen? Why would someone so young be elected as a queen? And uh, was she a good queen at all? Padme Amidala was born Padme Naberi on Naboo. Her father took her and her sister to Thede, the capital city of Naboo, in order to improve their educational and service opportunities. Royalty in Naboo doesn't work like other planets. The title Queen is for the leader elected by the people. The people of Naboo often elected young women, believing they possessed a form of pure, childlike wisdom that the adults lack. Virtually anyone could be elected as the new queen for a term of two years, so it's no surprise that Padme was elected so young. She had devoted herself to public service since a very young age, always with the interest of the people first and her second. By the age of 12, Padme was participating in the legislative youth program in which she met a slightly older boy named Paolo Jemabi. The two fell in love, but their relationship did not last as they parted ways when Jemabi left politics and chose to become an artist. His name is Paolo. We were both in the legislative youth program. He was a few years older than I. Very cute. Dark curly hair, dreamy eyes. All right, I get the picture. Whatever happened? I went into public service. He went on to become an artist. Two years later, when Padma Naberi was just 14, she began her campaign to become the next Queen of Naboo. She campaigned herself as Candidate Amidala, being anonymous in her name as it was a custom for candidates and monarchs in Naboo. Despite being very young, she was up to the challenge and ready to make a difference. She disagreed with her opponent, San Andrasa, who was the current queen which was running for re-election. She criticized her policy of isolation, wanting to instead expand and make allies with other planets in their sector, the same politics that had alienated the Gungans. She would go on to win the elections to serve as the queen at just age 14 for a two-year term. Although she was not the youngest ever elected, it had been a long time since Naboo had elected such a young queen, something which she would later question herself as she believed she may have not had enough maturity at the time of her election. Right after being crowned as the new monarch, the former Queen San Andrasa toward Amidala around Thede and advised Padme that Senator Chief Palpatine was her best resource for aid in the Senate. It was also during this time that she was entrusted with her aides who would cover and help her out in the future by disguising as her, while Padme would disguise as an aide, which is exactly what she did with what was about to befall against Naboo. As we see in The Phantom Menace, during her early tenure as a queen, Padme had to face a crisis like never before when the Trade Federation, under the leadership of Viceroy Nut Gunray, established a blockade on Naboo, mostly to harvest the plasma that was created in Naboo. But in reality, he was being controlled by Darth Sidious. Gunray intended to capture Amidala to force her to sign a treaty legalizing the blockade. However, she escaped Naboo with the assistance of Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi. During the escape, her ship developed engine problems and was forced to make an emergency landing on the outer rim planet of Tatooine. And it was during this time that Padme insisted to Qui-Gon Jinn to go with him to Mos Eisley as per the Queen's order. The Highness commands you to take her handmaiden with you. No more commands from my Highness today, Captain. The Queen wishes it. She's curious about the planet. Unknown to strangers, Padme had disguised herself as a handmaiden. Like if she was guided by destiny, coincidence, or maybe even the force, she met Shmi and Anakin Skywalker, who were slaves. Amidala took a liking to Anakin and called him by the more informal name of Annie. And when you think of it, they only had a five-year gap. Padme then witnessed Anakin race and win in the Bonta Eve pod race in order to help her and Qui-Gon to secure the necessary parts to fix the ship from Watto. Her traveling to Tatooine is what brought Darth Maul to the planet, who was looking for her under the orders of Darth Sidious. After successfully escaping the planet and the Sith Apprentice, the ship headed for Coruscant, where Amidala would seek help from the Senate. With the influence of Palpatine, she ordered a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum for for not resolving the Threat Federation blockade in a timely manner. During her motion, Amidala declared, 
This body is not capable of action. I suggest new leadership is needed. I move for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum's leadership. After electing Chief Palpatine as the next Supreme Chancellor, the Queen insisted on returning to Naboo. Palpatine, or Sidious, who was behind everything, had no more need for the Queen to return and sign the blockade, to which he was very surprised when the Queen insisted on returning. Just a side note to explain what was going on with Palpatine at this moment, it was that since Palpatine had obtained everything he really needed, which was to be the Supreme Chancellor, he had no more need for the Trade Federation. As we know, Padme returned and then met with the Gungans, where she finally revealed herself as the legitimate Queen of Naboo, offering an alliance with the Gungans, something that was previously unheard of by the previous queens. You shall not think and you are greater than the Gungans! <laughs> Me shall like this. Maybe we shall be friends. After the invasion of Naboo, Queen Amidala led the planet's rebuilding and recovery efforts. The process was very slow, as they did not seek external aid to recover from the damage of the conflict, just like nobody external to Naboo helped them in the conflict. After defeating the Trade Federation, Amidala would serve two full terms as Queen of Naboo. There was a popular movement to amend the constitution to allow her to serve a third term, as the Queen could only be re-elected once, but she declined and was succeeded by Queen Reilata. Not long after, the new Queen asked Amidala to serve as a representative for Naboo in the Galactic Senate, a request that Padme ultimately accepted. It was just right before she became a senator that she had asked her handmaids Sabi and Tonra to go to Tatooine to find and free Shmi Skywalker. This was years after her first initial meeting with Anakin and right before meeting him again for the second time as a Padawan. This is something that her future husband would learn from Padme's handmaiden herself, but by then it was too late. Anakin was no more, but instead he had become Darth Vader. Thank you for watching this video. I post videos every day on my shorts feed and I regularly post videos on YouTube regarding Star Wars gaps, characters and more. Make sure you are subscribed and I will see you in the next episode.